Hello and welcome to the third part of my quest system series. In today's episode we are going to add a very basic minimap to our project. First off you might have noticed that I imported some new textures to our project that are the goal icon, the minimap border, NPC and player icon and finally the text border. The download link for those will be in the description so make sure that you import them as well and set their settings to UI as we did in the first video. Now to get started let's select our NPC and player icon, right click and under sprite actions hit create sprite. Now we will have an NPC icon sprite and a player icon sprite so it's just save now. Then let's go to our blueprints folder and in here create a new folder called minimap that I already created here. Go inside of that and here we will need to create some assets. First, right click and under materials and textures, we will choose render target and call that map render target. Double click to open that up. And in here you can see a size x and size y variable. So that will define how large your minimap will appear later on. I will just set them to 300 by 300 pixel, that should work fine. Then we can save it and close it. After that we will create a new blueprint class. Then we will expand the all classes and search for scene capture 2D. Select that, hit select and let's call that map capture. Also open that up then select the capture component 2D and for the projection type you can either select perspective or orthographic depending on what you like best. I will select orthographic and if you do so you have to define an author width so basically the amount of unreal units that can be seen in width and height. I would just type in 3000 that worked fine for me when I experimented with, with some values here. Also scroll down to scene capture and we will need to define a texture target. Just select our map render target th that we created. Also we will scroll down and hit the little arrow here on the scene capture. And now you can see all the different types of flags. So basically that defines what types of object can be seen through this camera. And for our minimap, we want certain types of object to not be seen. So let's start down here with lightning features and show flags. We will uncheck everything in here. Then lightning components, show flags. We will also uncheck everything in here. Same as in light types, show flags. And in post processing, show flags. Then under advanced show flags, we will uncheck the atmospheric fog the render 3D text and the temporal anti-aliasing. And under general show flags we will uncheck anti-aliasing, decals, fog, particle sprite, translucency and finally skeletal meshes. Now that's everything for that. We can compile, save and close our map caption. So now everything that our map capture sees will be directly sent to our map render target and shown there. Now what we'll also have to do is right click on that map render target and create a material out of that. Call that mat underscore minimap. Then double click that up. And under main we will select user interface because we will add the minimap to our main widget later on. And for blend mode we will select trans then just connect the upper pin here to the final cut, hit apply, and that's it for our material. Now we also have to place our map capture somewhere in the levels so it actually sees something. To do that, we will attach it to our third person character. So let's open that up. And in the viewport, we will add a component, which will be a spring arm called map arm. Set the rotation in Y to negative 90 so it points upwards. 
then you can choose a target arm length. So that will just define how far away from your character the camera will be. If you chose orthographic view before, that doesn't matter because what you see is only defined by the author width. But if you're using perspective, that's really important for you. Something like 650 should work or 900. Then let's also uncheck do collision test because we don't want our camera to collide with walls or something. And also uncheck inherit pitch, yaw and roll because otherwise minimap camera would turn around if a player turns around. And that's not what we want to happen. Alright, now that's it for our arm and we also have to attach the camera to it. So we will add a component and this time it will be a child actor. Call that map camera and the child actor class will be map capture. Then we can drag and drop that onto our map arm to attach it and you will have to select the map camera again and just type in zero for the rotation. And now you can see that our camera faces towards our character. Alright, another thing that is common for most games is to have some kind of sprite representing the character in our minimap. So let's add another component which will be a paper sprite component. Call that pointer or player icon, whatever you like. And for the source sprite we will select the player icon here. Rotation will be 90 in X minus 90 in Z and let's move that up in Z to maybe 140. You can see that now it faces into the direction of our character which is good. Let's also scale it up to 2.5 maybe. Then let's go down to collision and uncheck the generate overlap events. Under collision presets we will define no collision. Finally we can give it a sprite color so that we can better identify our character. I would suggest you to use some kind of bright color, like a bright yellow orange tone. The last thing you'll have to do is in the details search for owner no C and check that. What that will do is that our third person camera down here will not be able to see the pointer because that's the owner of a pointer, but our map camera, our minimap camera will be able to do so. So that pointer can only be seen on the minimap and not in the real game. Then we can hit compile and save. And now we'll only need to put some kind of image onto our main widget so that we can really see it. Let's do that. Go to our widgets, main widgets, add an image. Somewhere, doesn't really matter. Then set the size to 300 by 300 pixel. And for the image we will search for our mat underscore minimap. Alright, let's hit compile, save and we can play now. You can see a little arrow facing towards the direction our character is facing and we can see a top-down orthographic view of our level here that updates when we're moving around. However, currently our minimap doesn't look that interesting so we can make some adjustments to change that. First off, most games tend to use circular minimaps. So to do that we would just have to go to a blueprints folder, minimap, and go to our mat underscore minimap. Somewhere in here right click and search for radial gradient exponential. And now you'll also know why we had to set our material to translucent because when we connect the radial gradient exponential to the opacity now and hit apply, you can see that we created some kind of circular blend out effect for our minimap. Another thing that you can do is change the radius and density and the best way to do that is in our mat underscore minimap. You can just hit one on your keyboard and click to create a constant here. Then we could give that the default value of our radius, which you can see when you hover over that, that is 0 0.5, so let's type that in. Connect that to the radius, click on it and convert to parameter. Then we can also specify a name for that, so that will be our radius. Let's hit Control c 
and control V to paste. This time we will call it density. Connect that to the density. And the default value is 2.33. So let's also type that in here for the default value. Apply and save. Now first off, you won't be able to see any changes in our material. But now we can hit save, close it, right click and create a material instance. Let's call that minimap instance. And when we double click to open that up, we can check density and radius here and we can play with that values and see our minimap updating in the corner. Experiment with that values and see what you like best. I just found out that 7.18 for the density and 0 0.53 for the radius work just fine for me. And when you found the right values, you can close it. Let's go to our widgets, main widgets, and delete the image here. Compile, save. Right click, under user interface, create another widget blueprint. Call that minimap. Double click. Let's first change that to desired on screen and kill the canvas panel. Then we will start with a new size box. Check the width and height override and set that to 300 by 300 or whatever the size of your minimap should be. Then we'll add an overlay and first add an image. Let's call that our minimap. Set that to horizontally and vertically align fill and for the image search for map instance minimap instance then we will add another image to our overlay and call that border also set that to fill and for the image choose border minimap border then we can hit compile and save close our minimap go to our main widget under user created Drag in the minimap, anchor that to the upper right corner, set the position in X and Y to 0, and the alignment to 1 in X. So that appears perfectly in our corner. Then we can hit compile, save, play, and you can see that our minimap now looks much more appealing and less squarey. Alright, that's it for adding our basic minimap. In the next part we will start with the implementation of our quest logic. See you then.